Okay. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2016, and I am Janine Pullman interviewing Harlan Pollock, Dr. Harlan Pollock. And um, we're here so that you can talk about your life prior to Dallas, growing up, your family, uh, your influences, um, and what, how you see the Dallas Jewish community, how it's grown, and everything that came in between, uh, and leave it as a legacy for both the Dallas Jewish Historical Society and for your family. It's accessible. <laughs> Whoever wants to hear it. So why don't you begin talking about your life, where you grow, where you grew up, and your family. Uh, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, in the in the good old days. I was born in 1937. Um, my parents were both immigrants. Uh, the big push in our family was to assimilate. So our Jewish roots were there. They were deep but they were modified by people really trying to be part of society. A little bit different than I think what we had seen today with all the diversity. Um, but it was, a, it was a good Jewish home. We were not particularly observant, but uh, most of the holidays we did observe. Um, my father was a bit of a workaholic. He, was, he had very little uh, formal education. His education was basically in the streets. And uh, he made, he, and he did very well as far as uh, his life in terms of how he lived his life and what he accomplished. And, and certainly was a, a role model for his sons. There were uh, myself and two brothers. My older brother Herb was 11 years older than I I was, and and my brother Sandy is five years younger than I am. So I was the middle child. Um, had a very basic simple childhood compared to what kids are doing today. Uh, we were, we had the freedom to do what we wanted to do. We innovated because we didn't have the gadgets and uh, spent a lot of days fighting World War II in the yard next door, uh, the vacant lot. Childhood memories are all very positive. I think I had a wonderful childhood. As I say, it was very simple. Uh, certainly not, didn't have the material things that uh, our, our kids have the benefit of today. Didn't have all the technology, but we had uh, we had a lot of good friends and a lot of good times. Uh, I grew up in a community which was a small suburban community, similar to, I guess, University Park um, in terms of the socioeconomic level. Uh, maybe. Maybe that's a little bit pushing it, but anyhow, um, we had a wonderful school system. Some people went to private schools, there were private schools, but, but most of us went to public school, we had a great public school education. Uh, I was not particularly athletic, and uh, I did have asthma as a child. Whether that was the excuse or that was for real, I'm not sure, but certainly asthma was treated differently in those days, and it was a... Uh, not a real drawback, so I was not particularly athletic. Both my brothers were, I was not. Um, I did fairly well in school. I think if I went back now after seeing what uh, some of our grandchildren have gone through, I probably am dyslexic and I probably have learning disabilities. One of the learning disabilities was being distracted by the girls, but mm -hmm. other than that. Um, but I, I did well in school and uh, went from the Bexley school system in Columbus uh, up, moved up north to Ohio State University and went through three years, four years of college at Ohio State. Uh, I met my darling wife, Hank, on her first day of school and uh, the rest is history. I mean, we just have been together ever since and uh, neither of us, have, I believe, neither of us have really looked back. Um, we certainly have uh, had a great life together. Um, I was in ZBT fraternity. I was fairly social, but I was very, a very serious student. I rushed through college, had three years of undergraduate school because I went during the summer, and, uh, and uh, went from there to medical school. 
stayed at Ohio State, lived at home my first year in school, which was certainly unusual in today's world. And uh, I actually got married uh, my second year, my end of my first year in medical school. So uh, life changed. I moved into my wife's house, <laughs> and uh, we uh, promptly had a child after the uh, required period of time, which was the style in those days. I mean, that's just what we did. And, and it was great. And the reason that's good is because we both have grown up with our children, and, and uh, uh, it, I think it's been good for both the children and ourselves. Uh, Ohio State Medical School was great. Um, wonderful experience. I have a lot of good friends from there. And, uh, after, and after medical school, uh, came down here to Dallas, um, to Parkland Hospital, why Parkland? Uh, I took a tour of many city county hospitals, university hospitals, and there was just no hospital like Parkland, uh, mainly from the standpoint of the morale of the house staff, the residents and interns. It just was a really uh, cohesive group. Uh, people were happy here, and that was really not the case in so many other hospitals. The hours are long um, uh, and difficult, but that really made no difference, and, and we really enjoyed it. <clears throat> I, I did f five years of general surgery here at Parkland, and uh, during that time, uh, I was a first year resident when uh, JFK uh, was assassinated here in Dallas, and I was a minor player uh, in, in the process. Uh, I was not, I was in the operating room when. Kennedy and uh, Conway were brought in, and uh, because of all the, and it was busy, but because of all the uh, action at the hospital, all the commotion, the quicker I could get out, get out I did, and uh, I, I drove home. Driving home, I saw uh, uh, Air Force One taking off from Love Field, and uh, went home to uh, what was supposed to be Todd's. Third birthday. Third birthday. And um, for some reason, I went to the barber shop to get a haircut just before the party. And, and uh, I actually saw um, Air Force One land in Washington while I was in the barber chair. Um, I happened to be on call that Sunday when, uh, and was in the call room with some of my colleagues as a first year. Uh, surgery residents rotating on anesthesia. We were in the call room and we had a small black and white TV and actually watched uh, Oswald being shot and then transported to Parkland and of course we met him in the emergency room, uh, helped with his resuscitation, his move, movement to the operating room and I was involved in his anesthetic which was an experience. Uh, I can remember LBJ calling into the operating room while we were there that we should save his life, which obviously was not a, not in the cards, and it was, it was just a very interesting experience. Uh, mm -hmm. One one which you know one of those kind of things you you know I'll never forget. Parkland was a great experience. Uh, I really learned to be a surgeon at Parkland. Uh, I then uh, had the opportunity to actually I didn't have the opportunity. I was drafted my third year. It's a, surgery is a four-year program, fourth year is a very important year, and uh, it was a big decision whether I should stay, complete my residency in general surgery, which I didn't need to, to, to go into my subspecialty of plastic surgery, but uh, I, after a lot of thinking, I decided I would spend the extra year there, and it was a matter of timing that I was able to do that, and it was really a great experience because I really did become uh, a surgeon that could think on his feet, it had all the principles behind them, and it was a great way to um, finish a career at Parkland. I then was drafted and uh, went to San Antonio with the family, um, was assigned to the um, surgical research unit, which was the Army burn unit located at Brook Medical Center, and had a very interesting year there, a very um, difficult year emotionally more than physically, taking care of uh, acute burns, many of which were from Vietnam, um, was, was, for me, it was very difficult. I 
I'm a fairly sensitive individual, and it was tough uh, watching these large burns come in, but we, that was my year there. At some point during that year, I found out there was a plastic surgery residency available at Walter Reed, which usually goes to the regular Army people, but as a reserve officer, I was able to get that position. So, I, so we uh, packed up, moved off to Washington, and spent two years uh, at Walter Reed, which was an absolutely wonderful experience, both medically and uh, personally. The, uh, Washington area is a great place to live. We lived in Rockville, Maryland, and have many great friends from there, and um, and see them to this day. In fact, next week we're going off to Washington to a bar mitzvah. Um, but it was a great experience, a great learning experience. Certainly, plastic surgery is a different specialty at that time, and uh, it was heavily loaded with reconstructive surgery, um, very little cosmetic surgery. And, uh, but it was a great experience. Uh, following my residency there, I, had, I uh, got the bonus year of a year in Vietnam and uh, had to leave my family. We moved off to New Orleans so that they could be with Hank's family. And uh, I spent a year in Vietnam in Saigon it was, a, it was a combat zone, but it was not any um, tremendous uh, security problems there. Uh, however, uh, is that your phone? However, uh, sorry, you're going to edit it, I trust. My, my uh, time in Vietnam was uh, spent at the Third Field Hospital, which was in Saigon. Uh, it was a, a wonderful experience as far as my medical experience, my technical experience. I took care of mainly Vietnamese, Vietnamese uh, civilians, did a lot of extremely interesting cases, uh, did a lot of cleft lips and pallets, which is a, is a great part of our specialty, but coming back to Dallas, I really have done very few since I came back, mainly because of circumstances. Uh, they mainly go to centers, and I was not. I was out in private practice. Uh, so Vietnam was um, a trying experience for both of us, but we both made it through. Uh, I came back to Dallas uh, directly from Vietnam. Uh, Hank had come here and found us a place to live, an office for me, and I uh, started much differently than most other plastic surgeons start, particularly in this day and age. I started in the general practitioners back office and uh, shared space with him for I believe about six months before I could get an office of my own. reason for that was that office space was very scarce and that's what we came up with. That's what Hank came up with. Um, Dallas was very welcoming. We um, enjoyed Dallas under the worst of circumstances, which is being a resident in which uh, I was really never home and we had um, connections with the community, but not quite uh, like, you know, most of our connections were the medical con connections through Parkland. Uh, we did uh, join Sheriff Israel, and uh, we, we, did, we did attend some services there. But it was a really busy time in my life, and we didn't do much. So under the worst of circumstances, we loved Dallas, we loved the people here. And in coming back, the city was very welcoming. I knew a lot of people in practice. And to come back to Dallas, and even in this day and age, 50, over 50% of the practicing physicians train at Parkland. So I certainly had people that I knew, and uh, practice evolved through the years. I had a wonderful experience in practice, uh, great patients, just an overall really pleasant experience. I loved what I, what I did in practice. Uh, and um, it got even better when some 20 years ago, Todd came, our son Todd came and practiced with me. And uh, we had a wonderful relationship, great experience together, and we did some innovation together, published together. And it was just, it was a great experience and a great way to finish up a career with an, with an associate for about 20 years. And then uh, last, Year, about a year ago, I decided it was time to retire. 
I spent an extra year in practice because Todd was president of the Dallas County Medical Society, and uh, it, it was a great transition year. Uh, I, I left the office and really have been back there a handful of times only. I uh, have no regrets about retiring. Retirement's been uh, really a wonderful experience for me. So I think you left out some of your local activities. Well, I, I went through my, my medical career. As far as activities, um, you ask about influences, and, um, and as I'm sure you discussed with Hank, um, in 1973, we... Um, let me, I'm talking. You know, you had your opportunity. Let me talk. In 1973, we were, um, I was only two years in practice, and um, Arnie and Janice Sweet came up with the idea of, of having a study group for a year, learning about Israel, about Judaism, and then culminating in a, in a uh, trip to Israel. It was a Federation-sponsored trip. It was uh, a bargain trip at the time. I think it was around $1,000 that we paid. I know for both of us, or each, I think probably for both of us. And it was underwritten by Federation. Uh, so it really seemed like a bargain. And um, the whole experience was incredible. It changed all our lives, and particularly the trip to Israel, which everybody says that. But for this group, it was really true. There were some uh, 20 couples. Uh, and if you take them one by one, which I won't do, they, they make up uh, at least Three quarters of those people make up the leadership of the city. Since that time, most of us are fading out at this point, but since that time, and it was really an incredible experience. The most interesting part of it was the fact that the Federation got very unhappy with the suites because we came back and they didn't raise the money they thought they should. Well, the bargain trip, I can't, I don't care, I can't tell you what our gifts to Federation and to local agencies have been since that time because of that trip and, and so it was really foolish but it was a wonderful experience uh, we made a lot of good friends uh, you know, that most of them make up the core of our friends today we don't see them all the time we do see them there's a real connection um, so that really got us more involved i was sort of a i mentioned the fact of assimilation my background in judaism was and it was so-so. I was forced to go to Hebrew school, and, and um, I mentioned dyslexia, and I, I do think that I had problems with Hebrew because I had problems with reading English. And uh, so I, I, my background was not great. I didn't know so much what I should have known, and that year of study really made a difference in the time since then. Um, I was very busy in practice, didn't have time to do much, but I got involved in the center uh, board, uh, I think Irving Donsky, uh, well, I got involved in the center board, and at some point Irving Donsky pushed me to get involved in the leadership role, which I have no reason, uh, there's no reason why I should. I didn't have the time to do it. Um, I didn't particularly have a desire to do it, and yet I ended up uh, spending um, several years in the leadership role, including uh, being president of the center in the mid 80s. Uh, at the time they were building, most of the new part of the center were involved in fundraising with that. And I don't think I was present when they opened this new center, but, but we were involved in the fundraising for uh, the, the major addition. And it, it was a wonderful experience. The center is, is the center of the community, so important. And uh, uh, it's changed a lot since, since I was there, but it was a great experience. Um, I have the I have a personal attitude that if I'm in a leadership role and I step down, it's time for somebody else to do it. So I moved on from the center. Uh, at some point, got on the board of family service and uh, spent a lot of years there, and did uh, and did end up as president of JFS uh, somewhere. Uh, I guess around the end of the 90s. Um, Michael Fleischer came just before uh, I started as president and uh, was a tremendous addition to the agency. The agency was certainly 
a good, it was good before that, but it's become excellent with Michael's uh, involvement. Uh, and uh, it, it was an absolutely wonderful experience for me. I was there when the new building, when the new building opened, and uh, we moved in there, and uh, it was just an incredible change from what family service had before. It has become one of the preeminent uh, social service agencies in the city, not just Jewish, but the whole city. Uh, I, you know, I made my contributions there. I can't remember everything that occurred when I was there, but, but family service has continued to evolve. Leadership has gotten better and better each year. I'm very impressed when I end up at a board meeting for one reason or another, which I don't go very often, but it's a very impressive group of people. And Michael has certainly changed the whole agency and made it so much better. Uh, I have been involved in uh, with APAC. Uh, I've, uh, I have also been involved in some uh, non-Jewish activities. Um, about five years ago, six years ago, um, Parkland was New Parkland was in its planning stages, and as I mentioned with Parkland, the relationships there, the experience we had there was really unique and uh, it became obvious it was more and more unique uh, in, in that we decided, you know, I guess it was my idea, and I got involved with a friend who was a prof professor there. We came down here together, Erwin Thal, who passed away a year ago. Um, and together, we put together a campaign for the surgery department and thinking, well, we you know, raise a few bucks uh, to be part of what's going on at the hospital. Um, we sat down with the people from the foundation and they said, oh, you should set a goal. And so they set a goal for us of $500,000, which if anybody, and you certainly know about raising money from doctors, it ain't easy. And so we thought that was a pipe dream. But as we progressed through the years of fundraising, we actually raised $650,000 from the surgery department, which was matched by the internists, the OBGYNs, and a few of the other groups that, that raised money as well. The interesting thing is, and how unique the hospital is and the city is, is that uh, the city of Dallas raised $160 million of public or private funds for a public institution, which shows the uniqueness of the whole situation. That's a, that doesn't happen in many places. I subsequently became a member of the uh, Parkland Foundation Board and have enjoyed my experience there. And I am also on the board of the Dallas Jewish Community Foundation, which I'm learning about every day. It is the future of this city. Um, endowment funds have to be raised or else Judaism isn't going to continue. The cost of someone Maintaining a Jewish family, Jewish education, all the things that, that need to be done um, are not going to happen in any easy way. And I think that the endowments that are being raised by the foundation, the funds are being raised there for the future is, is what's really important. So uh, I stay, I'm staying busy in retirement. I haven't had much spare time. We've had a few health problems that we've been dealing with, but those are better and um, taking less time. And you know, life is good. What would you, how would you look at your life and what would you say is the moment you were most proudest of? Most proud. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any one event, but at this point in time, going to a grandchild's graduation several weeks ago, our first grandchild to graduate college, had a, a meaning to it. Maybe it's my maturity, I, I'm not sure what, but for both Hank and I that was a, a really big moment in our lives and something, you know, but, and, and as far as the other things, I mean, just seeing, seeing the family, uh, our family and how it's developed, um, it has been such a thrill, and, and, and I think that's my source of real pride, seeing how Todd has um, come into medicine at a time when medicine is getting uh, problematic in terms of 
young physicians, how they're handling things, the ethics and all that. And I see him with all the old uh, ethics, all the old ethical standards, even to the extent that he's on a major committee of the uh, Texas Medical Board at this point. So I have a lot of pride in, in, in our kids. I think that Hank will join me, and I'm sure she probably said the same thing, but that's really has been the big thing. As far as personal accomplishments, you know, I've been very fortunate, and um, people have certainly helped me do things. I've, uh, most of what I've done has not been by myself, including so many of my accomplishing, accomplishments. Hank's been a big part of that. Uh, I've had people pushing at all levels and, and helping, and you know, it, it's not a it's not a, it's just an individual accomplishment, but there's so many people behind it. But, uh, and I guess the family would be pride. How would you like your family to remember you? Just as I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, th I think... Uh, it's a tough question. I certainly want them to remember me as uh, a friend, a role model, uh, someone who has set a high ethical bar for them, uh, a high bar of accomplishment. And, uh, and I think the, the, I think, you know, I think that's mainly it and just the, you know, I, I hope that they remember me as a good person. We set up our family philanthropic fund at the foundation several years ago, and we recently changed the name to uh, Hannah K. and Harlan Pollock Family uh, Fund. And we've met with the kids, and they know that we are making endowments through, through the uh, Created Jewish Legacy, which was the push to do it. But we created an endowment, we have designated an amount of money involved, and that may stay the same, may get less, may go up, just depending. But we made them a part of it, and they realize that that's theirs to manage as time goes on. Whatever they get from us individually is not the most important part. To us, this is the most important part, that they will carry on uh, our wishes to, uh, uh, our philanthropic uh, wishes for, for the future. Very nice. I uh, thought about three things that I didn't tell you. That you didn't tell me about. No. That I, <laughs> she thought of two I, things. No, I thought about three things that I did, and I, and I was listening to you. But I, I guess I should have said it. But um, if you'd like to come back into the chair, we can do that. Come back and talk. Yeah, no, I th no. Is there anyth anything we? I think. That you know, if there's something else that you want to share, um, how the community's changed, um, anything that you would want to have forever. <laughs> okay, I, th I think the major changes that I've seen in the community, of course, size is, is a, a big thing because it was a fairly small Jewish community when we came here. It's gotten bigger. I'm not sure we know the numbers, but I was part of our community um, doing the physical things that need to be done to make this a part of the A-Root. So there are so many uh, people moving in the community, a large Orthodox group, which was not present before. Um, so the size of the community has increased. The activity level of the community has increased. Um, seeing all the opportunities for Hebrew for Jewish education uh, is really impressive. I think that's been one of the bigger changes. Uh, we, we haven't been a big part of it uh, in terms of our kids being a part of it, although we've had three grandchildren that have had Jewish education, um, Jewish day school education. Um, I think that we see uh, the community raising a lot of funds there has been a change in the way funds are being raised. Individual agencies are raising funds, whereas in the past, the Federation really did all the fundraising. And I'm not sure the Federation knows it, but they have to make some changes. I'm sure they do. They have to make some changes at this point because um, it's those of us that are 
giving money the community would like to give directly to who we want it to go to. And that leaves out some, I guess, and so you, you, need, you need some kind of a federated system to uh, handle smaller agencies and, and uh, other things. But, but as far as, I think that's been a major change, and I don't think we're alone in that. I think that we see that happening uh, with all the events that uh, organizations are having, the agencies are having. The, certainly the Jewish community has been, shown a leadership role in the Dallas community and uh, we've had our mayors, we've had our council people, um, business leaders, very impressive what we've seen. It's kind of, it was a small town, it's a big city now and, and the Jewish community is certainly a major part of that. Okay, well thank you and okay. if you have anything you want to add um, at some point I can always come back with the camera. Thank you for um. coming and doing this. It's not an easy thing, I'm sure. It's not all this hot air. Don't say what you want to say. Don't don't leave any words unsaid. No, I just I was listening to you, and it reminded me that there were a number of things. That, I guess. Okay, so Hank is going to sit that, back down and that I, update that I didn't tell you. Okay. Um, that when I told you, when you knew that I was involved in the sisterhood, that I also was in Hadassah, I was very involved in Hadassah. I was president of one of the groups. Mm -hmm. um, that was something else that I thought I'd tell you that I did all that. Um, and I also um, went to visit, to, to work at Harlan's office briefly. I had a problem. I was supposed to go there for a week or two to help out, and I stayed for 30 years. <laughs> and I was waiting for him to retire. I thought I would retire at the same time, and then I decided he wasn't going to retire, so I did. So it's been what three years, I think, since since I left the office. Um, the other thing that I didn't say was in. 1970 something, I'm not exactly sure. Um, Harlan's mother died, and um, I never heard of, I guess I had heard of it. When we lived here, they had all these big parties for the um, um, what at the um, what do you think? Hebrew condition? Huh? Yeah, and, and I didn't know what the Hebrew condition was. And I would ask, and they said, oh, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. And so then Carlos mother died, and we went to Columbus at the funeral. And I was like, I'm doing all this stuff. And I was like, who did all that? You know, that they brought stuff into the house of candle and whatever. And I said, well, we don't have that in Dallas. And, um, Hold that. I need to go home and find out. So I came home and I talked to Rabbi Friedman. Was, he was there. And I said, why don't we have that in Dallas? He said, well, we do. I said, well, tell me about it. He said, I'll send you some information. I said, I think I could do that. And um, I had worked in a hospital. Uh, I, it was a volunteer. I thought I was going to be a nurse. And I worked several times in a, in a hospital, did something, I mean, not anything serious. Anyway, and then Harlan's listening, he said, well, I, can, I know I can do it. And so Rabbi Freeman said, I will send you some information. Well, he sent me the information and the very same day, I got a call to go to do it tomorrow. And I was like, I said I would do it. I'd been with Harlan, I'd seen autopsies, I'd done all this stuff, but then I thought, okay, I don't know if I can do it. So, these two old ladies, i tell you who they are, these two old ladies, they said, you come and you listen, if you want to help, fine, just go watch. Well, when I got there, and um, they needed help, and that was the beginning, it was sometime in the 70s, and 
And I was like the youngest person ever to do that. And I'm still there. I'm still doing it. And um, it's, it's just, I turned it down for several people that I knew, but I, uh, I, in the last, I guess it was almost two years now, a friend of Tammy's that I grew up with, and um, friends with their family, and I, I, and I was like, I don't know, I can do it or not. I've known her since she was in third grade, and they're good friends, and I was like, kept going back and forth and back and forth, and I finally said, you know what, I'm going. And the nice thing is that, you know, you sign this book, and unfortunately people know, I guess if they know to look at, you know, whatever. And I got from several people that I had done, somebody's mother and this girl, that the family was so appreciative that there was somebody that cared that was there. And um, it's, it was really, it's been really good for me. And I think Harlan too, that he, um, we don't go as much as we used to, I guess, because when I started, it was these two old ladies and me. And um, there's been a lot more people since then. And I guess the men too, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how many are in there, but um, it, and this been, was on behalf been, of Sheriff or for the whole community? Well, it, it's only Sheriff, except that occasionally there's somebody from Temple that wants to do it. Uh, I've never done an Orthodox, although... Well, they, they have their own. They have a different way. And we did go... And they have their own different way. Huh? They have their own. I know, but I said, they, and they do it different. And we did go, I guess it was a year ago, that one of the Orthodox shuls had a thing. Uh, that they were talking about it and telling about it, what they do and so forth. And we went. I was, I guess I went with it, but they never had a female that, you know, and so they were asking about that. This was a bunch of men. And um, so they were kind of surprised that I had done it too. And they, they asked, they have how, how did, how they did, must we, have women. well, I'm sure they, but, you know, from sheriff. And, uh, so they were asking, you know, what I did and whatever. But, um, and we had some person that came to talk to us about what they did. She didn't know as much as we did. I mean, and she was reading it from a book. And, you know, anyway, I, I thought about that, that that was a very important she part. She didn't have anything to say. <laughs> I thought that was a very important part. And, and it in is. Our, in our life that we were able to do that and and we're still doing it not quite as much because there are more people doing it. I think sure. the men are very protective of their position. The guys that do it most of the time, yeah. do it most of the time. Fortunately, it's not that many, but it's... No, but it's... I learned a lot from doing all that. And, and I think it's, it's been a very important part. So you got the Pollocks on film. The Pollocks are on film. Right. Thank you. Thank I'm you. going to turn it off. I think that's that's about it. That I didn't it's tell good you to, about. It's good to have a happy night.